Hello team, welcome back to another video on the Apply Medic YouTube channel. So if you're new here, my name's Chris, I am a medical student at Edinburgh Uni and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the verbal reasoning section of the UCAT exam for everyone applying to medical school this year. So the way that this video is going to be broken up is I'm going to start with giving you guys a, a brief definition and some background information about the verbal reasoning section of the UCAT. Then we're going to go on to giving you all of the Apply Medic top tips for verbal reasoning. And after that, we're going to go through uh, a kind of example passage uh, for the verbal reasoning section, as well as going through some example questions together, um, just to demonstrate some of the different uh, questions, types and styles that you might come across. So the verbal reasoning section aims to basically test your ability to read and interpret a passage of text and then answer questions um, based on some conclusions that may or may not be taken from that excerpt of text. So one of the main reasons why this skill is particularly important for medical students and doctors is because you constantly have to read and interpret uh, new information about, say, a particular patient and their medical history and have to pull out all of the important facts and information that you need in order to, say, for instance, determine a diagnosis or make up a management plan for that patient. So a very important thing to remember for verbal reasoning is that when you're answering these questions, the answer can only be based purely on the information that's provided within the passage of text that you're given. And so say, for instance, if you get a question and you can actually answer it from previous knowledge that you have that's out with um, or outside of the passage of text that you're given, um, then you cannot base it on any previous knowledge or assumptions, only base it off of the information that you're given in that passage. So this section of the UCAT consists of 11 separate paragraphs of text and each paragraph has four different questions that are associated with it. And so there are 44 questions in total within this section and you have 21 minutes if you don't have additional added time for any other reason um, to answer all the questions within this section. And so there are really two different question types that you can be asked in the verbal reasoning section. The first um, and kind of more straightforward question type are what's called true, false, can't tell questions. And so these are questions where the question stem will give you, say, a statement and then you have to, using the passage that you're given, um, or the paragraph that you're given, um, identify whether or not that statement is true, false, or if you can't tell, um, based solely on the information provided within the passage of text. And so the second and more time-consuming and complex question type is where you're given uh, an initial statement in the question stem, and then you will be given four different statements in the answer options, and you have to select which of those four statements are correct. And the question stem can ask several things, including, say for instance, which of these statements is the author most likely to agree with or disagree with, or it might give part of a statement and then the four other statements given below as the answer options may or may not correctly complete that partial statement. So there are a lot of iterations um, or ways that, that this ty second type of question style uh, can be asked. And so verbal reasoning as well as decision making, quantitative reasoning and abstract reasoning will all get a score between 300 and 900 giving a total combined score between 1,200 and 3,600. And it's also important to note that the verbal reasoning section has no negative marking whatsoever, um, just like the rest of the UCAT. And so it's important to not leave any question unanswered when you're doing this section. So now that we've got some of the background information out of the way, we're now going to go on to outlining the Apply Medic strategy for the verbal reasoning section. Number one, you do not have to answer the passages and questions in the order that you're given in the exam. 
And so a key technique that you can utilize is to find either the passages um, that are shorter in length or the passages that have questions that are the true, false, can't tell variety. Um, because doing these questions first is going to be relatively less stressful and mentally taxing as the more complex questions and longer passages. And so that's going to reduce the stress on you. It will allow you to assimilate into the exam more and calm down a little more, especially given this is the first section that you do in the UCAT and then you'll be warmed up after you've done these relatively more straightforward questions and you can move on to the more complex ones with the remaining amount of time that you have. Number two is to not read the passage of text in full and in detail because this can waste a lot of valuable time with a limited amount of time that you have in this section. And so a good technique to use is when you're given a new passage of text is to read the first and last sentence in each paragraph within the passage. And what this will do is allow you to assimilate to the overall topic um, of this passage of text, but also will allow you to understand the subtopics that are being discussed in each paragraph within this passage. And so this will allow you to hone in on a particular paragraph of text once you've read the subsequent questions relating to that passage. Number three, when you're answering true, false, can't tell questions, read the stem of the question and identify any defining keywords or phrases. Then take those keywords or phrases and then scan the passage that you're given and try and identify where those keywords or phrases are. Once you've found that relevant part of the text in the passage, then read that sentence in full and in detail and read the sentence before and after that sentence. And that will give you more context to the statement itself. Then you can use that information to answer the question. Number four, for the alternative question types where we're given a question stem and then four individual answer options that are each statements themselves, the approach is a little bit different in that essentially you have to treat every answer option as a true false can't tell question in its own right. And that's why this question style is a lot more time consuming because you're repeating that process four times. And so you will have to do this. There's no kind of way around it. Um, however, a key technique that you could use is, especially after you've answered a few other questions beforehand, and then you get a question like this, if you've already assimilated a little bit to the passage of text itself by answering previous questions, then what you can do is try to guess which of those four answer options you think might be the most likely. And then instead of just going A, B, C, D, you can start with the one you think is the most likely to be correct and then work from there. And that just means that, well, if you are correct, then you've got the answer correct in the first try and you don't have to repeat that same process for the three remaining answer options or for the two remaining answer options if you get it on the second try. Um, so you can incorporate a little bit more uh, judgment from you as to which answer option to assess first. And finally, number five. So with the very limited amount of time that you're given for the verbal reasoning section, it's very important to have a holistic approach for how you're going to answer and address each question and passage. And so for some people, it may be more beneficial for them to equally distribute the time that they have to every single one of the 11 passages and 44 questions um, and attempt all of them equally. However, if you think that this isn't enough time for you personally to assimilate to the questions and the text and answer the questions to your full ability, then what people can also do is allocate the majority of the time to say 75% uh, of the questions and then guess the remaining 25% or whatever percentage you think works best for you. That way they have more time to answer this slightly more limited number of questions. However, they're able to put more effort into it and able to think more clearly about those questions and therefore more likely to get them correct. 
And so it's weighing up the pros and cons for each of these holistic techniques for how you want to actually approach this section. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some example questions and read an example passage to show you some of these exam techniques in practice. And so I've taken an excerpt from an article written in The Guardian that's roughly the same word count as a typical passage that you would get in the UCAT itself. And so I'm gonna put it on the screen now and I want you to read it using the same technique that we talked about before with reading the first and last sentence of each paragraph within the passage. And so now we're gonna move on to question number one. This is a true, false, can't tell question. And so I'm gonna put the question and the passage of text side by side on the screen now, and you can pause the video, think about your answer, and then we'll discuss it together. Okay, I hope that went all right for you. Um, apologies, I am having to look at my phone here just to see the passage and the question to properly talk through it all with you guys. So if we look at the question now, we'll see it's Wimbledon found that all championship ticket holders did not know who most of the players were in the game. So this is the statement that we have in the initial question stem. And we're asked whether or not this statement is true, false, or if we can't tell based purely on the information that we have in the passage. Using our scanning technique, well, we will identify some of the keywords within the question stem. And so we have Wimbledon, championship, ticket holders, and game, say for instance. And so I'm just gonna pick the most, what I think might be the most beneficial or easy uh, keyword to utilize, and I'll say championship and ticket. So I'm gonna look for those keywords within the passage. So if I go to the top of the passage and I scan through, then, well, it's quite good that this comes up early on because I can see that in the second line of the first paragraph, it says championships. So I think, great. I've found the correct location within this passage um, where I can assess in more detail. I'm gonna start by reading the sentence in full. And so it says, Wimbledon is turning to big data to help improve fans' tennis knowledge after discovering even ticket holders at the championships were not aware of most of the players in the game. And I'm just going to quickly read the subsequent sentence just to see if that adds more context. And it doesn't seem like it does. And so if we look at the sentence in more detail, we can see that it says, after discovering even ticket holders at the championships were not aware of the players in the game. And we compare this to the question, which says Wimbledon found that all championship ticket holders did not know who most of the players were in the game, then we can see that there's a key word difference here um, between all and even. And so if the statement said that even ticket holders did not know who the players were, that's very different to all ticket holders didn't know who they were. However, with the word even, does that mean that it was uh, some, the majority of, or all of the ticket holders? I'm not sure. It's, it's not a very definite uh, choice of word. And so it leaves it to ambiguity. And so for me, the answer for this question is going to be can't tell. And now I'm going to move on to question two. And so again, I'm gonna put both the question and the passage up now, and you can pause and think about your answer. The question asks, which of the following statements is the author most likely to agree with? And so we now have A, B, C, and D, four separate statements that I'm going to use the similar true, false, can't tell approach with. And so if I look at A, the idea to use big data to improve fans' tennis knowledge arose during the COVID pandemic. So again, just like the true, false, can't tell questions, I'm going to scan this statement and identify keywords and phrases so that I can identify the key sentence in the passage. And so this is, well, this one has quite an obvious keyword and that is COVID or coronavirus, thinking about the different iterations of the word. So if I go up to the passage, I'm now going to 
quickly scan through to see if I can find the word COVID. I have found the word COVID at the bottom, bot the third row from the bottom um, on the first paragraph. And so if we look at it in more detail, the sentence reads, Alexandra Willis, the All England Club's Director of Communications and Marketing, said the idea had come about before COVID. Now, I don't know what idea that is, and so I need to gain more context by reading first the, qu the sentence before and see if that gives me enough context. The sentence reads, AI-powered stats will seek to better explain the strengths and weaknesses in players' games, but also predict upsets and rising stars with data built in part from trawling newspaper headlines. And so that sounds like the artificial intelligence, big data uh, topic that's being discussed throughout the whole passage. And so if we go back to the answer, the idea to use big data to improve fans' tennis knowledge arose during the COVID pandemic. We know that that statement is not true. True, and so therefore the, the author is not likely to agree with that statement because it clearly said the idea came about before the COVID pandemic. So then if we go to statement B, a key aim of using artificial intelligence to improve fan knowledge is to keep Wimbledon socially relevant. Using the same approach, I will look for keywords within this statement. Um, and so I'm thinking fan knowledge and relevant or socially relevant. So I'm going to scan through the passage again, look for these keywords. I've found the word relevant in roughly the middle of the final paragraph. And so if I read the full sentence, leveraging technology to help fans become more informed, engaged and improved throughout the Wimbledon fortnight is at the core of our strategy to ensure we keep Wimbledon relevant. I don't think I need to gain more context by reading either the sentence before or after. That is quite self-explanatory within that sentence. So if I go back, a key aim of using Artificial intelligence to improve fan knowledge is to keep Wimbledon socially relevant. Well, actually, yes, um, it seems that the author does agree with that statement based on what was said in the passage. So now I know that that answer is correct, so I can select it, and that means that I do not have to do the same process with answers C and D because I've already collected the answer and I can move on to the next question. And now on to the third and final question. So again, I'll put them up on the screen now and you can have a look and select your answer. If we look at question number three, artificial intelligence powered statistics are designed to. So this is a partial statement that then it has four separate statements after it, which could or could not correctly complete that statement relative to what is said in the question stem. And so because I've already roughly read parts of the passage so far based on the previous questions, I'm going to try and answer these questions in the order of which ones I think are most likely to be correct instead of the normal chronological order going from A to D. If I look at these answer options for A, it says, only be utilised for fans spectating via television. Now, I don't think that because they were talking about ticket holders as well, they will be going in person. So because of that, I don't think that that statement is correct. So I'm going to skip that for now. B, encourage more people to play tennis. I didn't see anything about people playing tennis in that statement. However, it does seem reasonable. And so I think I will possibly go for that one. Then C, expose the strengths and weaknesses of tennis players' games. I'm sure they did mention something about the ability of the tennis players uh, and their likelihood of winning or their strengths and things like that. So I think I'm going to go for that answer option first. And then D, select which tennis players will play one another. I don't remember hearing anything about that. However, I think I might go for that answer option second if C does not work out. Utilising the same approach for answer option C, expose the strengths and weaknesses of tennis players' games. So I think strengths and weaknesses are the keywords to take from this answer option. Now I'm going to do the same thing again 
and skim through the passage to identify the key sentence. I've found the key sentence within this passage and that is roughly halfway through the first paragraph. And that sentence reads, AI powered stats will seek to better explain the strengths and weaknesses in players' games, but also predict upsets and rising stars with data built in part from trolling newspaper headlines. Now, I feel like that sentence really explicitly uh, explains everything, so I don't need to get extra context by reading the sentence before and after that sentence. And so if I go back, putting the question stem and answer option together, artificial intelligence powered statistics are designed to expose the strengths and weaknesses of tennis players' games. So it's obvious that this answer option is correct based on the information provided within the passage. So I now, because of using my judgment, have selected the correct answer on the first option. And so now I don't have to do the same approach with the remaining three answer options. And again, that saves more time. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you want any other information or resources, then you can head to applymedic.com, um, which is our website. I'll put it in the description down below. And that has a number of eBooks, tutoring, free articles, lots of different resources regarding the UCAT, as well as personal statements and interviews to help you with every aspect of your journey into medical school and through the admissions process. And also, if you want more videos like these, please consider putting a comment down below and also ask any questions that you like and also give this video a thumbs up because it really does help out the channel a lot. And if you want more videos in the future, then feel free to subscribe and you'll get a notification whenever we put a new video up. But thanks very much and I'll see you next time.